Hi, I'm Rod from EV Power, and um, the purpose of this video is a demonstration how to video on how to wire up a Servcon controller 35 way plug. <coughs> so, this is an example Servcon controller. <coughs> it's a PMAC controller for, for controlling permanent magnet AC motors. And all of the Servcons use these 35 way plugs which are an IP rated plug uh, for the signal connections and that just plugs into the, the unit like that. So that's completely sealed and watertight now. Uh, all of the connections are watertight. To get the plug out, you just lift back that tab and gently ease it out. Listen for the suction sound. Uh, so, yeah, the purpose of this video is um, uh, how to uh, wire and put, put a pin into this plug. Uh, it, it's not that intuitive how to use the plugs, so that's, that's why we're making this video. <coughs> now, here's an example pin. And here's an example wire. This is a uh, 0.5 millimeter squared plated wire. <clears throat> what does the plating do, Rod? Uh, the plating uh, is not essential, but using plated wire rather than copper wire is good for um, because it, it doesn't corrode so easily um, if it's exposed to the atmosphere. So first thing we're going to do is strip. I usually strip about 10 mil, 10 millimeters off the end of the um, wire, and you can see there that it's plated. It's silvery coloured. So we twitch that up a little bit and just bend the end over. So and fold it to five mil. If you it's like. about five mils exposed. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so and that catches if it, <coughs> if it starts to pull, that sort of widens it up in the hole and catches it. Doesn't it, it? it makes it easier to crimp for starters. Um, and yeah, it, it makes it wider. And if you start to pull on it, then, then it makes it harder for it to come out. So I don't have the proper crimping tool here, and most people probably don't have the proper crimping tool, so I'm just going to use these pliers. So I'm just using some thin nose pliers here. And you can see I've placed that down in there, and you can see where the, where the collar or the ferrule of the wire is in relation to the bed part. <coughs> and I'm just, just going to crimp that over there. So crimp one side over, and then crimp the opposite tab over and give it a fairly bit of elbow grease to um, to make sure it's reasonably tight so you can see the two tabs folded over there yeah so if you had any doubt about that staying in would would, would you solder it or um, you, you can solder there's, there's various schools of thought on soldering and crimping um, if you do solder it, sometimes the solder goes down a little bit inside the wire and it creates like a, a point where it's hard and then soft. And quite often if the wire is wobbling, it can actually uh, yeah, break at that point where so the solder joins on. there's a fatiguing type weakness there. So there could yeah. be a, potentially a fatiguing type weakness. <clears throat> because it's plated, there's not going to be much trouble, you know, and this pin connection is also plated, so there's not going to be much trouble with corrosion. Um, and if you get your crimp right, then it's going to be nice and strong. It's not going to pull out so easily. So before I try and pull on that, I'm just going to get the, the cutting part of the, the pliers and just squeeze down relatively gently on the middle of that, that um, join. Just give it a little squeeze. And you can see that sort of crimp that over a bit more. So that is quite tight now. You know, it's, there's no way I'm going to pull that out. So that combined with a fold... <coughs> yeah. Yep. So for for all of our connections, that's proven fine so far, and we've done thousands of these now. So so the next part is to crimp over the the bit that holds the uh, plastic cable, and that gives you more more security then. And that would help that natural sort of fatiguing anyway, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> You'll have 
have to excuse me, I've got a touch of bronchitis, so I'm a bit, a bit poorly at the moment. <clears throat> so that's basically our crimp. Now you can see that's a little bit banana shaped. If I try and put that into the connector now, it's not going to go in smoothly. And the whole, whole point of the exercise is to make sure it should slide in like butter. If it's a good crimp and it's straight, it'll slide in like butter. So we just got to straighten that up so the whole thing's just quite straight. So once we get that straight, that's reasonably straight now. Does it have any of those <coughs> subtle little tabs that someone would have here to stop it when it's uh, in? Or? No, these ones don't. You see that See that thin neck there? Yep. That actually gets gripped by the plastic. It's actually got some plastic tabs inside that actually grip that right there. Okay. So that there what stop it going back and forth. It's quite a clever mechanism, but it's very intricate. It's sort of well designed, but it's not really very intuitive. So to get the plug open, there's two there's two ends to it. Um, <clears throat> I'll do this front end first. You just put the screwdriver, a, a, a small thin bladed screwdriver, just in the front there, and and pull that black tab back. And in theory, this should just snap open on one side. So you're lifting the red part out. Yeah, lifting one the end. red part out. Try this end. It's going to make a liar of me. It should just come out. It's always tricky when you've got an audience. See, it's, yeah, it's started now, so I started that end. <coughs> of course, I know millions of people are going to be watching this video. So now you can see it's starting to slide out. Now, it comes out so far and then it stops. So it's not going to come out any more than that. That's useful to, to some degree if you just want to quickly slide pins in and out. But just for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to take this all the way off. So again, we need to push that little black tab back a bit. So push it one more time. Yeah, push yeah. it one more time out. And then the thing just slips straight off. And that's sort of not polarised. It doesn't matter which way around it goes. It's just a holder. So there you can see the pins sticking through there. So that's got eight pins in already. That's got eight pins in already. This is uh, this particular um, harness doesn't require that many pins. <clears throat> so the next stage is to take the back off, and that is again, it's quite quite. You've got to get the blade right into that corner there. It's got this big hole here, which is is next to useless. If you do that, if you pull on that, you'll just rip it open. You've actually got to stick your screwdriver, or well, maybe there's some special tool that they've got. But um, what I do is stick the screwdriver blade right in there and twist it up that way, and it gets it out. You can see the little, the little ledge there where it catches, little catch. You yeah. See that? I hope you can get good enough resolution on my iPhone. Um, and so I'll do the other end. Now this pulls back. It's always good to have kind of loose wires rather than kind of cables, you know, like six core cables coming into it because it allows you to, to pull this right back easily. Now under here there's a silicone rubber um, sealer pad. So that red part is soft? It's soft oh, yeah. and, and that's what seals it. So you've got to pull that up gently. <coughs> And that just pulls back as well. So that's completely sealed there. You can see it's, unless you poke a hole in it, it doesn't actually have holes in it. <clears throat> so we're putting in pin number 24, which would be the brake input. <clears throat> oh, sorry, that's not, number, not, not pin number 24, because that's already occupied. <coughs> uh, well, we'll put in a different pin number. So Let's you're reading subtle pin numbers off that black plastic right now, aren't you? They're very, very hard to read, but they're there, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, uh, well, let's say let's let's put in pin uh, 18, for example. So it, it is numbered, like uh, Jamie's saying, uh, on there. You've got to start with pin one there. Yeah. Now, now this thing is directional. It's got that all polarized. It's got that little chamfer out there, which matches with that thing there. 
and so it'll only fit in one way. So you've got pin 1 there and pin 12 there and then it goes pin 12, pin 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So pin 18 would be there. Um, and then it continues on to the end and then pin up to pin 24 and all the way up to pin 35 here. So it's important to remember the numbering goes 1 to 12, 13 to 23 and 24 to 35. And when you look at one close, that's obvious, isn't it, Bruce? It's, it's, it's pretty obvious. <clears throat> For some people, they might think, oh, well, where's, where's, you know, after pin 12, where do you go? Do you go backwards or do you start again? But you actually start again at the beginning of the row. <clears throat> start reading a page. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to put in pin number 18. So pin 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I just line that pin up with a hole in the back and the hole in the rubber and gently push it through and it makes its own hole. Pop. <coughs> so that goes <coughs> all the way through and we make sure we've got it lined up with the correct hole underneath. It is possible to get it in completely the wrong hole underneath and then push the lid down as though it's going to work and you're wondering why the thing's not working. So I might have done that a few times. I have done that before, yes. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's just double check. So we've got pin 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that just slides in there and if I've done my crimp right it should just slide in like butter. There you go, it did. And that went click as well, didn't it? It went click yeah. as it went in. So that one's all the way through. Now if you're having a devil of a job getting it in there, it obviously means your crimp is wrong because it should slide in like butter. <clears throat> See that one slid so far, it's slid right through. So there you go, that's all our pins in there. <coughs> Pardon me. And <clears throat> they've all crimped, they've all clicked on these little shoulder things here, these little tabs, these little tabs that uh, hold it tight. So now what we want to do, <coughs> ideally what you do, why does that one keep pushing through? What you want to do is put this front cover on first, at least that's how I do it. Other people might do it differently. Now, <clears throat> when you first put them all through, they might be sticking at slightly different directions. So it's sometimes a little bit difficult to get this back on. <clears throat> but um, you've just got to persevere uh, and don't force things. If you force things, what tends to happen is that just tends to push the pins back through. So that's clicked into place. And now to click it all away, I'm just going to gently gently push it, click click, and you can see our pins there, you can actually see them through the holes, you see that? Yep. And you can double check on the back side that none of them have pushed back up, because there's nothing, nothing worse than putting this thing back together and bolting all your motor and everything on, and you're figuring out, you know, why doesn't the motor work, you know, it should be working. And it could be something as simple as that one of these pins has got pushed up when you click this together and it's not making a proper connection on there. It's either making no connection or it makes an intermittent connection, in which case you get an intermittent fault. <coughs> and intermittent faults are the worst faults of all. So um, now that's all done. And we can gently push our... Note, note common use of the word gentle in... Uh, my conversation here and it's really important with this thing that you don't don't get angry with it don't force things um, if you're gentle with it it'll it'll work so that's all good and the last thing is to push our gate down our back gate so click that end click that end and there we go job done so that's that's our um, harness, and you've probably only got about 20 of those to do in a harness, <coughs> and that clicks into our controller, like that. <coughs> <coughs>